roll. Oh, yeah. Three pre-rolls today, including our new sponsor, Nutrafol. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code JRVP. Find out why 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. Again, enter that promo code JRVP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code JRVP. The Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. It's sponsored by BetterHelp. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash JRVP today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash jrvp finally ag1 when i started drinking ag1 daily i started feeling better if you want to take ownership of your health it starts with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase go to drink ag1.com slash jrvp that's drink ag1 dot com slash jrvp check it out last show of the year it's christmas time in burbank and all through the podcast studio we got emails we got a hot manatee statue and we got our best of list from the entire year all coming up in episode 228 of the jesselnick and rosenthal vanity project jrvp junior vice president they say it's your birthday it's my birthday too yeah you know what Aaron I don't always give you a lot to do on the show Mm -hmm. you know and I finally give you something you can sink your teeth into and I told you about it we rehearsed it twice, and then you did it Mm -hmm. and I feel like every time it got lower energy like you were, were you embarrassed to be a part of the Beatles? No, no, of course not. I thought he Nor did a the good Jesuit job. Nor the Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Hey, Aaron. Wow, that's the first time I've ever done that. Aaron. That's power. Aaron. Yeah. They say it's your birthday. Da, 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 da. And wh- wh- you're doing a different song. Yeah. You do it. They say it's your birthday. Da, na, 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 na. It's my birthday, too, now. I don't know. Yours is kind of off a little, too. You, you do it to me now. I haven't heard that song. They say it's your birthday. da na 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 We'll let the listeners Maybe I'm decide. thinking of a different song. Maybe you and Aaron are right, and I'm wrong. I don't know. You need three points <laughs> to make a straight line. Right? Yes. It's fact. That's Thank you, Aaron. All right, let's talk about the week. This is the last episode of the year. It's not your birthday yet, but it's not coming. Yet. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, this is Tuesday. We're taping this. Birthday's coming Friday. I got I to gotta cut through the jungle that is Liz's birthday on Thursday <laughs> to get to mine. It's double plans. It's, it's I got to think of a dinner reservation for, uh, for her birthday and then for my birthday. And guess who's paying for both dinners? The big dog. <laughs> Wait, so what's the difference, really? Do you talk about like you at your birthday and her at her birthday, or is there any? Not really any special. Well, you get it's any, more you like get my birthday gift? is like you less pressure of, and I, the, my gift fell through. So like I, I I had something going that I was excited to give her for like a both birthday and Christmas, and then it fell through la- like literally two days ago. It fell through, and I was like, okay, let's reset. And now I've saved the day by just agreeing to take her shopping. So we'll see. It's that kind of romantic. We're just, we're burned out. We're both burned out from this whole long tour. You would think like your first day off, you just sit and chill. It's not like that. You, I'm, I've been slowly getting it together where I've been in a horrible mood. Part mm. of it is being run down from the road. Part of it is like these, these um, chiropractor things that I'm doing right now. Like he'll release something and it like, it's fucking emotional. Anyone who's been through a lot of chiropractic stuff, like there's some things they do where you're just like, why am I feeling like this? I'm like, I'm cranky. And so that's been tough. 
Uh, let me go through the week. There was a lot that happened last week, and I think that's part of why it's been extra run down. But listen, every day I feel better. I'm getting more sleep. I'm excited for uh, the next couple weeks, even though the weather is garbage. I thought I might get to sit by the pool. I cannot. What's the point of living in Los Angeles if I can't sunbathe in mid to late December? As I assumed I would be able to, not understanding how weather works. Last week, I taped the pilot for Comedy Central. Uh, it was it was great. It was fun. A lot of people were there, and it was the kind of show where we've got like we've got six comedians, and then I'm the host. And I was like, oh, I've got a lot to do. Let me have things planned in the show. But everyone, all six people, were so funny and killed so hard that I was more of a, uh, a master of ceremonies, just keeping the show moving. Everyone else is like killing. I just kind of got to be cool and keep the show moving along. Everyone was very happy. Everyone was very happy after the show. I don't know what that means for the future of the show. I know I've talked to the show owner. And listen, when I do this podcast, I go home every week and Liz is like, how was the podcast? And I say, I don't know. I truly don't know. Like, we're just in the moment. We're just doing it. It's fun. But sometimes people are like, that was a great episode and that was a bad episode. And I could not tell you what was different. It's just, that's how it is. The show, everyone seems psyched about. The showrunner who's putting the edit together now is happy about it. I don't know what that means for next year. Um, but it was good. So I was happy about that. But again, it was, it was a lot. And then I left the next morning to drive to San Diego. And again, I'm not feeling good. San Diego was one of those weekends and I had this in Denver. It's not always, it doesn't always happen like that, but it's sometimes in multiple shows. The only time I felt good in San Diego was when I was on stage. But when I was on stage, I felt so good that I was just so happy to be on stage. Like the adrenaline knocked everything out of me that I wasn't feeling good about. And I just had three and a half great shows. Late show Saturday, I snap. It's a, it's a, the show is great. There's a couple of annoying people and I again if someone yells something out I try to just brush past it I've got two New Year's resolutions for next year in terms of audience uh, I will not tolerate going forward the uh, inappropriate laugher I'll call them hmm. where I'm telling a joke I'll be like and you've probably heard these people at my shows before it's someone who's like a big fan they're usually fucked up and I'll be like, and this is not one of my jokes, but I'll be like, so my cousin committed suicide last year. And someone in the audience go, ha, 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 I hate that so much. You are fucking up a joke. Again, people around you will laugh that it happened. And then you'll do it again. I hate it so much that in 2024, that will not be tolerated. That's a gots to go situation. And again, it usually happens later in the show. What are so you going to do about it? I'm going to say, shut, knock that shit off right fucking now. I hate it too much. And if they do it again, they're gone. I haven't had security kick out anyone uh, this, whole, this whole tour that I, would, I will relish it. That's one thing I won't tolerate. If you got a problem with a joke you want to yell out, I had some of that in Boston, we can talk. We can fucking talk. But if you do the, if you do the stupid laugh too loud at the setup of a joke, you gots to go. That's something I don't tolerate. The next thing I'm not going to tolerate anymore, and this happened a few times this year, I don't think any JRVP listeners would do this. I, I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there in the world. If you see my show, you like my opener, you don't like my opener, that's fine. I'm bringing the opener because I like the opener. Not everyone has to dig it. When I was an opener, I ate shit 95% of the time. <laughs> that's fine. What you don't do is go on my Instagram that has like photos of the night and talk shit on the opener. That's, that's a gots to go situation. That'll get you blocked. Gots to go. In 2024. That'll get the comment deleted and you're blocked. You don't have to like them, but don't go on my page where they're tagged and talk shit. Not cool. You don't need to do that. And again, I don't think any Jesselnick and Rosenthal vanity project. JRVP. Junior vice president. Listeners would ever do that. Yeah, you know, I'll give you an update too. Remember when I talked about New York Carnegie Hall? how a, uh, I had a problem with an employee. Yes, I remember. I believe the employee had the pictures taken down from the show. They had complained to Instagram. I put in the caption that, uh, except for one a staff member I wanted to strangle with my bare hands, everything was great. They took it down, and now my team is like fighting to try to get it back. These are these. What are, do you mean uh, took it down? How did they, they, they said, they, they, I just see an alert, like, because you're inciting violence against someone. We're taking it down. I'm like, that's insane. These pictures are, they're great photos, 
my family's in those photos. And again, we can put we can repost photos, mm-hmm. but it's not the same. That if that doesn't come back, good fucking luck ever getting me back to the New York Comedy Festival. I'll put that out there. Again, it would be years from now when I would ever do it again, but I will take that pettiness into 2027. <laughs> I will happily do that. And again, maybe they come back. I've said I'll, I'll edit the caption if that's what it takes. But everyone, my, my team, I was like, I think it's the guy did it. And he's like, I think that's what happened too. Of course. Wait, so you would take out the line that this guy. Yeah. And I didn't identify it. the person. I can't believe they would be like, that's a figure of speech. It's not an incitement to violence on Instagram. My team's never had to deal with this before. They're doing it now. That angered me. I hate this person. And again, if he walked in here right now, I wouldn't know who he was. But... If I don't get the pictures back, I'm going to find out. I'm going to ask my agent, remind me of that guy's name. And I'm going to have it in the back of my head moving forward. I don't know what that means. But I know that I will always hate you. And I will be on a project and say, hey, have you ever heard of this person? And if they're like, oh, yeah, he's working here. I'm like, not anymore. He's not. And like, oh, he lives down the street. Not anymore. He doesn't. He's got to go. He's in like that guy. Uh from Zanies or what was the guy's name from last week in the Midwest that you still remember his name that Dave you don't Stroop. you don't go to Dave Dave, Dave Stroop, Stroop. Dave Stroop Dave burned Stroop. all the funny bones for me this guy could be the new Dave Stroop we'll see anyway San Diego I was I was I, again at the end of every show so last show this guy's laugh doing the inappropriate laugh I'm annoyed I'm pushing through and then I'm like people always ask what was my favorite joke you know uh, my favorite joke I've ever written. And someone screams in the balcony, screams, shark party. And I snap. <laughs> and again, snapping for me on stage is different. I'm not yelling. I just go, I go, you know what, guys? This is my last show of the year. And I can make it a short one. And then, <laughs> and then it was so hard not to laugh because, and again, that's snapping for me on stage is just to even like acknowledge that the crowd is bothering me. And I say that and the crowd gets so quiet. Uh... I felt like a teacher who had like yelled at students who was like one kid's playing too hard and I yelled at everyone that, that it was hard to get through the last 20 minutes of my set without laughing because I was like, this is so funny that everyone's like super polite, super quiet. Like I'm San Diego late show. You did not deserve that. I apologize. But did they, did it hurt? Did it cool the laughter at all? No, laughter was great. It was just, okay. they got so quiet that I was like, Ooh, I really, <laughs> I really went school marm and I didn't mean to go full school marm. I meant to make a joke. Well, maybe Obviously I'm good. not going to make it a late, sh- uh, uh, an early show, but uh, San Diego, they, they were all great shows. I love the Balboa theater. I enjoyed being there. Happy to have some recharge time and get ready for 2024. Uh, then I came back. All right. I came back and I am exhausted. I get home at like two 30 in the morning. Uh, after after the Friday show, I get to sleep at 6 a.m. because I'm just so happy that the tour is over. I wake up the next day at like 10, and I'm fucking fried. I'm so tired. I have a couple. Th- I have to go to the chiropractor that day. I do some things, and then it's Queens of the Stone Age that night. And I'm really debating pulling the plug on Queens of the Stone Age. I'm so just like tired and out of it. Liz wants to go. She's like, I understand if you don't feel good. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's go. It's gonna be a great show. And it was. We get there. We get the we get the passes. We're in like the friends and family section, they call it. And I, I, I kind of don't like the VIP treatment at an LA concert. If you, I was, you're in this backstage area kind of thing. It's like a bunch of like, I don't know, people who know enough to get back there or were, uh, you know, are friends of the band or know people in the band. And there's so many people that I'm like, if this was in Minneapolis, backstage of the Queens of the Stone Age concert would be a cool place. You'd be mm-hmm. meeting cool people. This is just like kind of weird. Everyone's looking around. Some people are coming up and saying hi to me. Uh, no one I know. But I'm like, I don't, this is, it feels like a C and B scene kind of thing. Then we go out to the, to where we sit for the concert. And I'm sitting right in front of Bill Burr. It's Bill Burr and uh, <laughs> Bill's, with, Bill's with a friend. And I'm with Liz. And we're sitting behind him. And we just kind of say hello. Like kind of nod hello. I don't think Bill and I even shake hands. We just like say what's up. How's it going? We sit down, the show, start, the show starts hard. Like we missed the opening band, it's just like killer from the beginning. And there's a fucking kid, and he's a kid. He's like 25 at tops behind us, who just keeps screaming, yeah! and for as long as he can. Like it's a long bellow, and it's not a cheer, it's not like a yay, it's like this, it's this thing he's practiced that is so loud and it's right behind us. It's like literally he's directly behind Bill and I'm so tired and in such a bad mood that every time he does it, I turn and I fantasize about just punching him in the stomach. 
<laughs> like giving him a little tap that like as he's getting this breath out that he like stumbles and is like what and i'm like stop doing that it's everyone hates it and he does it every chance he gets literally like in between every song he's doing it and it's so annoying and i keep forgetting that it's a kid I'll turn around to be like, F- I'm going to fucking say something. And I see it's this young kid. And I'm like, okay. You said he might be almost 25. Yeah, but, he's, but he's, that's a kid to me. He's, he's young. He's not like a 50-year-old man or some shit. And, but every time I turn, I recognize, okay, he's too young to, to give shit to. And then I lock eyes with Bill Burr. And Bill Burr is as angry as I am, as tired as I am, as over the shit as I am, Bill Burr is twice that. <laughs> no. so, so when I, I, I turn around I look and I, I see Bill and then Bill relaxes me because I see Bill's taking the anger on for both of us and then I, and I go back to the concert it's incredible guy does it again I turn like I'm going to say something now oh yeah he's a kid lock eyes with Burr repeat throughout the show 90 minute show as soon as the show's over lights go up people are walking out I turn to Bill and Bill's like that guy's the fucking I'm gonna, I almost fucking lost it during that and as he's saying it to me I see the kid Mm-hmm. And the kid has now recognized Bill Burr, <laughs> has his phone out and is grinning ear to ear like, I can't wait to meet my idol. What luck? Not knowing that we've been talking about destroying this person for the last 90 minutes. And Bill is so nice. Bill is way nicer than I would have been. Because I'm like, if he asked me for a picture, he's getting to go fuck yourself. And I'm walking out. Bill is so nice. He's like, oh, hey, yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. And he goes to take a picture. Then I look back and Bill's holding the guy's camera. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, he's making Bill take the picture. Bill must be really losing it. And then I hear Bill start talking, like he's doing a video. The kid has gotten Bill to do a cameo and I had to walk away. I had to walk away because it made me so happy. It, I was just laughing at what must be going through his head. <laughs> that it was incredible. And then went backstage. I hated that. Hated having to, it's, it's people like waiting to say hi to the band. Like, I'm sitting in a corner trying to avoid Sean Penn, who's sitting on a couch. I'm like, this sucks. I just want to leave. And Liz is like, but they invited you. Like, they want to see you. You're the, probably one of the only people here who they like, actually want back here. You shouldn't leave. And I was like, it was killing me. You and Sean. Yeah. They probably wouldn't well, give a shit if they didn't see you there. No, I only talked. I, Josh came through. I was like, hey. He like, turns, gives me a hug. We talk for like a f- maybe two minutes. And he's clearly just come off stage. He's like in that place. I know that zone. As soon as he turned to talk to someone else, Liz and I were out of there. Uh, and Sean Penn is, is his neighbor, by the way. I was like, oh, yeah, fucking Sean Penn's a Yeah, my neighbor. Uh, but it was, it was an amazing show. If you can see Queens of the Stone Age on this tour, go see it. It is incredible. And now, after this podcast, I got fucking nothing. I got one more uh, chiropractor appointment. And then I can just kick back and celebrate multiple birthdays and then we go now we're going to the celtics clippers game on the 23rd yeah you're gonna come with me you got three tickets i haven't gotten them yet i'm team just leave it to me i'm I'm team get it at the last minute it's way better that way that's a losing team no it's it's the winning team it's gotten me it's it's team like get the best seats possible for way less because you're willing to live and being uncomfortable okay. and not knowing what the answer is until like 20 minutes before the game and then suddenly you're you got fucking amazing seats i'm gonna trust you i mean i'm excited for the, the game time. i'm excited to time. go and root for the celtics as we as we've done i think every time i've seen no the first game we, uh, we ever saw lakers celtics we rooted for celtics celtics won yes then celtics lakers lakers won with your kids right, right pre-pandemic that's right and now now it's like a week before the pandemic. celtics clippers which I'm, uh, I'm excited about. The Clippers are on fire right now. I like that story uh, because, A, you, as aggravated as you can get, like Bill Burr's, you know, he, his, not his whole thing is being aggravated, but his anger, I can imagine, would be another level to, to what Jesselnick is. But how is this kid getting away with it? On the other hand, like, this is a sign that you guys are all, you know, a lot of, a lot of bark, no bite. That this guy is being that annoying. This kid's being that annoying. He's got Burr and Jesselnick in front of him, two of the you know biggest badass comedians there is, and they they don't say a peep. You can get away with anything. I tell you, what, it's it's the kind of thing. And Aaron, I'm sure you know this. Being at sporting events, it's like if he wasn't right behind us, it wouldn't have been annoying at all. But it was like a goddamn foghorn going off every five minutes during the show, and he was so proud of himself. 
which made me even more furious. I tell you what, if it had, if the situation was reversed, if I was sitting behind Bill Burr, I would have said something mm. because not like I'm a, like a badass or something, but I was so tired and cranky, like my back hurt, like I had to sit down for most of the concert. It was like it, I was not at my finest. That I was I was uh, I would have happily gotten into a fight with this person, but it was again it, that's it's on me. But it, it was it was tough. I mean, you, sh- you showed in, in San Diego, too, that it, you're going to be able to keep your, news, your New Year's resolution of keeping this crowd in line. And it's it, not my show. It's not my job to police other people's right. show. But if I'm like, you were screaming in my ear, stop doing that. And even I think if I had turned around and said, stop doing that, he would have at least done it less. <laughs> fewer. He would have done it fewer. Are you, are you worried coming off the road? You know, you've just been on such a go, 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 go that actually like it's it might be a little difficult, the, the letdown almost of it all. Like, yes, it's nice to relax and everything, but it's almost like uh, unplugging the machine is not easy. I haven't been able to relax, to be honest with you. Like, it's, I mean. it's, you forget that like you, you always have somewhere to go, someplace to be, a car's picking you up that did not have that for, you know, a week or so. Is, uh, is you can't even understand what's happening. But I know that like every day I have less and less to do. F- I'm sorry, fewer and fewer to do. Aaron, relax. What? Relax. And it's actually only been three or four days. Were there any, uh, I'm curious, just personally, maybe you don't want to say who's on the pilot, but were there any like comedians that you wanted to shout out or that was like extra funny? Listen, I, I, people were, everyone was great. Everyone did their job well because it was, it was, a, it was a, a variety of comics. You know, they wanted diversity on the panel. Uh, there was one, and I don't want to. I don't want to say who anyone was because I don't know if they wanted to be out there. That they were on the pilot. I don't know how it works. I could have talked to them, but everyone did a great job. There were some people who kind of like picked their moments, you know, in a in a smart way. Like you're not going to try to compete with the high energy people. There was one guy who I did not know, who I was not familiar with. I kind of knew from like the internet. I'd seen his name, and he fucking killed it so hard hmm. that I went up to him afterwards and I was like, "Did you?" come do this pilot because he had to fly from New York. He was like a guy who's like, yeah, he's in New York. And I'm like, we have the budget to fly someone out. And they're like, no, he's, he's doing it on his own. He's flying out here on his own to do it. And I go, did you come here just to impress me? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, you did like you, the, whatever you were, your goal was like, he killed it. And like, just really smart jokes came out of the gate firing. And, uh, I was very impressed by him. He was the one guy I did not know a couple of friends, uh, of mine that were on it. And it was, it was a little tough. And I'll talk about this for just a second. I don't want to get too down, but a, uh, a comedian passed away last week and he got, uh, he was in a bike accident. He was on a, um, a, uh, one of those city bikes or something, got hit, whatever happened. Uh, he was in a coma. There was a GoFundMe going and everyone thought it was going to be okay. And then the day of the pilot, uh, we found out he passed. And I didn't know him that well. He'd been on one of my Largo shows, a guy named Kenny DeForest. Very funny guy, very sweet guy. I knew him from that one Largo show. Uh, but there were people on the show who were such good friends with him that it was like, do they even do the show? And people oh. kind of all together decided the best way to honor him uh, would be to do the show. He had done some roast battle stuff before that he would have wanted people to do the show. Everyone killed it. And uh, it was kind of like a little somber afterwards. Everyone was kind of going from there to a, uh, you know, a, a memorial for him. Uh, so that was a little tough that day. But people really kind of came together and... Uh, and fucking, you know, show must go on. So R.I.P. Kenny DeForest. Go look at some clips if you can. He was a, he was a great guy. Everyone, uh, everyone liked him. Everyone mm-hmm. liked Kenny. But yeah, pilot was great. Everyone, everyone killed. And again, if people want to put it out there, who was on, I'm happy to sing their praises. But uh, everyone did great. I, uh, I celebrated Rosenthal Christmas. I don't know what you were doing last Saturday. I guess you were doing your last San Diego show. That's what you were doing. No, I was at the Queens of Stone Age show last Oh, Saturday. that's right. Um... Rosenthal Christmas, people don't know. It's annually the Saturday before the weekend before Christmas where my family leaves me by myself it's, on Christmas. It's the Japanese and the Jews coming together <laughs> to celebrate the birth of Christ way too early. <laughs> I mean, it is a little confusing. It's hard to even, even my kids are like, you know, Ellis was like, it doesn't feel like it's Christmas tomorrow. And I was like, because it's not. It's not. You know, um, well, but she's also like, there's no presents under the tree now. And it's like, yeah, that's sort of on us. I haven't wrapped them yet. But also because we went very light on the presents this year. Just just a few. Because we had just one big showstopper. And I wasn't going to put that 
out by the tree because I thought they would figure it out. Although they said afterwards, there's no way they would figure it out. But it was a good move because they opened the presents. They had fun with some football cards and books, some other little stuff, but not not a ton. And they were happy. And then I was like, oh, I, I did the thing. Um, I never like thought I wanted to do this thing, but it was very enjoyable to be the dad doing the things like, oh, I forgot. There's one more present. And they were like, oh, really? And I, and I come down and, and I bring it to them. Uh, and it's a PS5 and they fucking acted just like like you would want your kids to act when they got the best present, yeah. at least to this point they've ever gotten. And they went absolutely nuts. And Emika got it on video and everything. It's great. What is the game that they're into? Or they just want PS5? Like uh, I, know. I got them. Yeah, I knew off the bat Madden for Walker and uh, this game called Sword Art Online, which is based on a, a manga that Ellis loves, uh, which is like a role playing game. Uh, for her, so they they've been playing playing the hell out of those since they got it. That's it was, awesome. It was awesome. It's awesome when you kids like you when you can give a kid something that gets them that excited. And they didn't know like it was coming. Game, they yeah. for whatever reason it, they could, they knew they wanted it, but they they for what you know we had not really talked much about it, and they had they were convinced it wasn't going to happen because they never really have gotten a good a good big big show stuff or like that. It was nice. Well, what's cool is that you got to experience like that going well. Yes. Because you don't want to like I, I guarantee there are parents who try this. And the kids are like, what? This Christmas sucks. This is the worst. I hate you. And then they're like, here's the PS5. And they're like, yeah, give it to me. But like to have them be like satisfied with, uh, with the other things and then and get that is, is, uh, is great. I was delighted how happy Alice was too. That's my 12-year-old daughter. who Because I wasn't sure she would be as excited and she just couldn't stop laughing. She was amazing. Well, I think for your kids, like they don't feel like it's truly Christmas unless they're thousands of miles away from you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the pandemic so much. Uh, was they couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. um, we got to have those Christmases uh, to myself, you know, or, or together. And now I'm now I'm back with you. I don't know actually if we're gonna hang on Christmas or not. We'll figure we're it not, out. We're not gonna hang Christmas Day, but we uh, we were definitely gonna hang uh, during the during the week. We'll figure during it the week, Christmas Eve. Um, I'm dropping this off at the airport Christmas Eve, and then I'm 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 done. I got plans Christmas Day. A friend of mine who's uh, who's kind of here alone. We're gonna get a meal and hang out uh, hang out with the dog. But the rest of the time, I'm, and I, I really want to go see. I love the Christmas holiday season together, seeing a movie that should not be a Christmas movie. And I've got it uh, okay. for us this year. I want to go see Zone of Interest. Yes. That, I want to see that. The Je Jessel Nick and Rosenthal Zone of Interest Christmas is what has to happen. <laughs> that I'm like, the, I want to like put on a Santa hat and go watch like the most depressing, horrifying movie of the year. And then uh, it'll be a yarmulke out. for me. Yeah. Sure. If you, I mean, first time you ever wore one. Seems like uh, weird. Uh, I went to a Jewish wedding, but that's it. I uh, never a temple. I saw. I watched a couple of movies this week. I saw. I, I'm trying to catch up on stuff. You know, uh, I watched like an episode of The Curse. I want to try to get into that, the Nathan Fielder uh, TV show. And I watched um, The Holdovers, which I thought was great. Alexander Payne. I think one of the worst trailers I've ever seen for a movie. Like that trailer makes you never want to see that movie. I know. And it's great. And then when, and when I heard from someone and it wasn't you, maybe it was even a review that I didn't read, but I saw the headline, but it was a writer. I like that. Oh, they loved it. They're like, oh, you got to see, you know, this is, and I was like, oh, I just expected that people were not going to like this movie based on the trailer, which is which is really unfortunate. Yeah, it, uh, they, it, they went too they went too hard on the trailer. They fucked it up because it's it's a great movie. It deserves to be seen. A great holiday movie with the family. It's cool. And then I saw uh, May December. I watched it last night. I loved May December. I people are saying it's controversial. I don't. I, I just thought it was a fucking great movie. All the characters are bangers. Performances are awesome. And I felt like it was more. What I loved about it, it felt to me. Aaron, have you seen this yet? No. It felt to me almost like a noir where like the the detective trying to solve the case is a like super hot actress in like real like in the character she plays is like a famous TV actress that the way people talk to her and the way they reveal things I thought was fascinating. And then, again, the movie is so much more than that, but I loved it and we'll absolutely watch it again. If you're wondering what I thought about May December, I fucking loved it. I did. I mean, I love uh, what was his? Far from Heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Far from Heaven. That's a Todd Haynes movie. Uh, Carol's good. Carol's great. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I have a lot on my list. I'm gonna crank. I'm gonna crank it out. I uh, before we want before we moved on, I did want to know your take on the Steelers completely pissing down their leg, ruining listen, their season, and listen. possibly if it continues this way, and it's it's grim. 
the end of the Mike Tomlin era. Uh, happy to talk about this. And pissing down their leg is so generous. <laughs> to get to seven wins and then shit the bed three weeks in a row against Arizona, against the Patriots, both games at home, by the way, and then to have last week's uh, disaster against Indianapolis. Uh, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I literally, and I've never done this before. I've never been like, I wash my hands of this season. Again, I love my team. I love the owners. I love everyone on the staff. I loved Matt Canada. That's how I support the team. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done with the season. I went online and I bought a Detroit Lions hat. What? Look, I don't support any of the football team except the Steelers. You know this. Baseball teams, I can, I can have some fun. I can be a Dodgers boy and a Pirates We're boy. We're in a Dodgers hat right now. I got this, when, as soon as they signed Otani, I bought this bitch. But I got the, I got the Lions hat. My uh, sister-in-law, my brother's wife, is from Detroit. Big Lions fan. And I, I like that team this year. They're fun. I'm going to root for them. I'm going to be a Lions fan the rest of the year and pretend like the Steelers do not exist. I love Mike Tomlin. I think he, has, he can do no wrong. If he does leave, I think it could be a mutual parting of the ways. I agree. And I think he's like our Andy Reid. Andy Reid is still a god in Philadelphia. It's okay that he left. I don't think it's a failure on his part. He won a Super Bowl. I think he's a Hall of Fame coach. He will always be beloved by the team, by the players that he coached, and hopefully by the city. They wanted Cowher gone by the end of Cowher's term. They wanted Noel gone by the end of Noel's term. I think that's normal. I don't think it says anything bad about him. I think this team has to be bad for a couple of years in order to get good again the way they want to. The, the way the NFL works, I, I think they've just been, they've been just good enough to be average Yes. And they need to have a disaster season and, 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 uh, and get some draft picks, get something in there, because this way of keeping the wheels on the bus is not getting, not getting it done. And these three, these three games are, the two games are horrific. No, all three. Horrific. What do you mean? The all three are bad, but the two at home to two win teams? I mean, I think Indianapolis is better than than. Yeah, but last week, yeah, they lost by like 30 to Gardner Minshew. And just watching their disorganized, like they look like a team that's sort of, that's poorly coached, that's getting out coached, that does that they're, they're not trying. It's terrible. It's truly terrible. And again, I don't, I don't think Tomlin's doing, like, Tomlin's been there a long time. Sometimes you got to move on. I think it could it could be an Andy Reid situation. And look, they're tr right. they're trying to get rid of fucking Belichick this year. That might happen too. That's it's, definitely it, happening. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's not an absolute failure. I still love Mike Tomlin. I love him so much, and I I will feel bad if he leaves, but I'll understand. I'm glad I asked. Now, I mean, you've got better Steeler stakes than most of our network. 2023 Steel Steelers season, I'm fucking done. <laughs> I'm fucking done. I can only name one Lions player, but I'm getting into it. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. That's it. But I like the coach. I like the I like the enthusiasm. Dan Campbell. Mm -hmm. Couldn't couldn't have told you his name before this. Big but guy. I'm and I and I like the city of Detroit. Steelers. I'm sorry, but it, but I'm fucking done. I can't do it. Two, two losses in a row to two win teams at home. If you would won, if they had won both those, it's a nine win season. Tomlin's got that streak going. If he get, somehow pulls out a a winning season, I'll be furious. He won't. This this feels like a we. It's a cry for help type of end he's of the losing, season he's for everyone. The next two games. Yeah, and losing. I think he. I think you might be onto something that he might be like. Actually, I kind of want out. It's maybe been a little. Sometimes crazy. you've been there too long. I don't think it's anything against the city. I don't think it's anything against the team. I think you've been there too long. You got to go. Belichick's coached on several teams. He's the, considered the greatest coach of all time. It's fine, but it's okay. And now it's time for. Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Uh, I've, I've been collecting bracelets. I haven't opened up any of the packages <laughs> yet. I've got we've we've got a bunch here. Uh, I've got a bunch at home. I'm gonna I'm gonna when we do next uh, year's episode, the first episode of the year, I will have opened them all up. I don't. I'm, my fear is that I would like open them like oh this is cool and then lose the address. Who gets the gets the win? I'm gonna open them all up, look at them, pick my top five, and I'm gonna send out. I'll announce it uh, on next uh, the next podcast in three weeks, and then ship out your albums to you. Um, other than that, you know what? If you're listening to this Tuesday night, right after it comes out, 
Uh, and then, you know, it'll be uh, posted in an hour. Uh, you'll get to hear this first. I'm uh, my uh, uh, make updates for Boston and Foxwoods. Uh, the, you'll get an email tomorrow if you had tickets. It'll say you either get a refund now and you can buy this or you can, you're locked into this, whatever. Uh, you'll get it tomorrow. Uh, April 24th, 25th, I'm in Boston. At the one, the one show at the two shows at the Wilbur and the next night at the Chevalier Theater. Uh, on the 25th, and then the 26th, uh, two shows at Foxwoods Casino to make up for those dates. Hope everyone can make it. Uh, that's what's got to happen. That's the soonest I could get there with the with everyone's schedules. Um, and that was. Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Notes. Notes. Did we get any notes? Now it's time for ad copy. Oh, Fuck yeah, Aaron, you it's nailed a that nice one. little early ad copy, and it's a, a new sponsor. Look, you don't have to choose, Anthony, between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, uh, just better hair. Men think kind of losing their hair is inevitable. Take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol science Backed hair growth supplement for men. So th- this is for thinning. Mm-hmm. You know, it's dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It, it improves your hair growth, visible thickness, scalp coverage, all that. Like I'm not someone who thinks like, oh, am I losing hair? Like maybe it's creeping back like a little bit. Maybe it's thinning. You once noticed I, it haunted me. Uh, sitting down in a chair, you're like, oh, yeah, I see someday maybe you could get a little bald spot in the back. It's getting ahead of that. Nutrafol, you go there, go to Nutrafol.com slash men. You take their hair health wellness quiz. You identify causes of your thinning hair, and they give you a personalized plan for better health through the whole body wellness. It works in a clinical study. 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol's men's hair growth supplement so uh you're gonna be confident you have you have more hair if your hair is nice and thick i have started taking my Nutrafol. they sent it in the mail it's very easy to do uh just a daily supplement it's healthy for you it helps uh your metabolism you can do all sorts of things there's different causes uh, of thinning in terms of stress hormones environment nutrition lifestyle and metabolism as i mentioned whole body health it helps improve that and so i'm getting ahead of this i'm taking my Nutrafol. Yeah, if you if you look in the mirror, you don't like what you see. Nutrafol, even a little, uh, even little thin, even, thinner, even yeah. if even Be if proactive. you do like in there. what you see, even if let's say you're in like the one or two percentile of height, and you're the co-host of a popular podcast with a handsome, uh, famous comedian, and you're on air all the time, and yet you think you look in the mirror, you think, wow, I look pretty great. You know, you still have that little level of confidence, but you even want to get higher. Nutrafol. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. You enter the promo code JRVP. You can find out why 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men. Spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. You enter the promo code J-R-V-P. That's Nutrafol dot com slash men. Promo code J-R-V-P. You know what else you want to do? You want to unwrap some presents. And when I say presents, I mean DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5, you can get $100 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? You can uh, play the classic slots, blackjack, roulette. You can play exclusive games you'll only find at DraftKings Casino. Uh, there's all sorts of different variations on the casino games. Whatever games you like, they'll, they'll find one. And it's very low minimum. You can play low stakes. You can play high stakes. What do you like to play? When you go to an actual casino, Anthony, what do you play? Slot Roulette. machines. Slot machines? Yeah. You can do that. You're not ready to play for real money? No problem. DraftKings game let you test out the games uh, for free. I'm, I'm kind of a roulette guy. It's fun. You know, you, I've, I've, I've played some roulette before. You're, at, you're a little bored at home. You, you get that DraftKings casino app. You kind of set a limit. You, you go crazy. Download the DraftKings casino app now and you sign up. 
with the promo code JRVP, you pay $5 instantly. All right, you play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code JRVP only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly 21+. plus. Physically pre- present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in o- Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. One per opted in new customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credit awarded, which require one-time playthrough within seven days. Terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house. Restrictions apply. You're so good at that. You're like the Micro Machines guy. Remember him? I, I would love. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Aaron, who do you think? Who do you think is better, Micro Machines guy or Greg? I mean, it's close, but Micro Machines guy. Oh. Yeah, that's. What, I mean, I, I didn't want to say it. He's very because it's Christmas. He's very fast. I mean, that just shows the difference between us. Like, if if you were like, who is better, Aaron, Micro Machines guy or Anthony? Well, that's a different. I mean, it's Anthony. Yeah. So. Greg is like if the Micro Machines guy and the Dunkin' Donuts guy had a baby. <laughs> He's in the middle there, right, Aaron? Absolutely. If you were going to rank a Micro Machines guy, Dunkin' Donuts guy, Greg. I mean, you just did it. I heard that Dunkin' Donuts guy got after it. (laughs) And that was... Uh, Copy. And now it's time to take it down to a place where I swear to God, emails are a thing. It's Email Corner. Email Corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. Thing. Guys, emails, since the invention of emails, they've been a thing. And that's not changing today. I can't speak for tomorrow or next year, but as of right now, episode 228 of the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project, Chair VP, Junior Vice President, they're a thing. And we're going to treat them as such. You can email us at jrvpjuniorvicepresident at gmail.com. Miss Kim will peruse, pass it along, we'll read. And we'll answer. I know. There are so many good emails. Keep them coming. Uh, as Anthony said, we will be back in two weeks again. We're off for Christmas week and in New Year's week, we will be back in a couple weeks. And then I looked at the schedule, Anthony. We're just on. There's no off weeks hmm. for months and months and months. So uh, get ready for a lot of JRVP and no, in no, the new year. No two episodes, you know, a week shit either. We're going to be week to week. <laughs> We're going to be week to week. I mean, don't, don't make promises. You never know. I got that... Uh, I got like a trip. You never know. I swear on my children's eyes. Uh, I was wondering, this is our first email, and this is from Will. If Anthony could share his experience with how his past or present girlfriend's parents took it when they found out their daughter was dating the king of dark comedy. Uh, Did any of them disapprove solely based on the jokes you create? I also would like to know how you would feel about nicknaming your fan base the Jez Heads. Better or worse than the Dane train. <laughs> Thank you guys and Merry Christmas from the birthplace of Elvis, Tupelo, Mississippi. Hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, Jez Heads is a no-go. That's not happening. You want to call yourselves Jezzle Maniacs? I'm not going to stop you. I don't need to have a name for the fandom. I don't, I don't need that. I'm not going to be like, hey, Jezzle Maniacs, but it's not going to be Jez Heads. And uh, listen, I'd rather you get on the Dane train. I'd rather you... Hop in front of the Dane train, <laughs> then call yourselves jazz heads. Uh, everyone's been cool. Everyone I've ever dated who has, like, the people who would have been within their rights to be like, what the fuck, would be the, the, the uh, families of the people I dated uh, right at the beginning. You know, you Catherine, you Catherine, yeah. no, like afterwards. You know, when I was actually like, starting, when you're in college, everything is like, your future's so bright. You gotta wear shades, Aaron. I just mean I just meant Catherine specifically, but I was that's how I was. Yeah, Catherine. When you're like when you're struggling, uh, Catherine's parents were very nice uh, about it. The dad was thrilled that I was a comedian. Uh, The mom was like cautiously optimistic. It's like you just don't know if there's going to be money. You know, after everyone after Kim has been, oh, you're a successful, uh, you know, performer who uh, makes way too much money more than anyone actually deserves like everyone's psyched and like liz's family 
everyone through my my parents asked that question like is her mom okay with uh you know with the with the jokes and like yeah everyone's great everyone gets it strangers with her though i think elizabeth had a job she was in in boston shooting something and was staying at an airbnb and the woman whose like house it was was talking about stand-up and was like oh i shoot stand-up in la and she's like oh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan i really like nanette i really like and she like was naming like ellen degeneres and she's like oh you should watch my boyfriend uh he's got specials on netflix and tells him the name and then Liz goes to work and the next morning before she's getting like in the car <laughs> the woman's uh as Liz is like oh thank you so much for everything you know I'm, my car's here and she goes um i watched uh both your boyfriend's specials last night and she's like oh uh did you like it and she's like yeah i did i mean i watched both of them my son came in the room one point and he was a big fan he was surprised that i was watching he was a big fan and she goes um does he treat you okay <laughs> and Liz laughed and she was like I've got to get in the car right now and leave but like yes it's an act uh, he does treat me some might say better than okay some might say I treat her like a human being mm, too well too well be. too well so yeah everyone's everyone's happy everyone's happy about the money and the fame <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our next question is from Dustin Dustin asked, does Greg think he could score a single point in a tennis match versus either of the Williams sisters settle a debate between my wife and I? Hmm. This is going to this is a, more of a question of like, is Greg a, Greg a good liar? Because I know the answer. Aaron knows the answer. How does Aaron know the answer? Because it's no. Well, it's you could not. Okay. First of all, it's a single point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to win 24 points to win a set. You lost me. Okay. Uh, It's not a game. A game is like you got to win four points to win that game. One point is, you you understand what a point is in tennis. I know. Yeah, I get it. So it's just, I only got to win one point. I only got to hit one great shot or they only have to miss one time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, On my serve, and I'm going to put this in, in present day. Uh, but even if I put myself back in high school, I'm not going to win any points on my serve. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I'm going to get lucky. On their serve, well, that's going to be tough too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe on my serve. I'm going to put myself in present day. She just had a daughter like a few weeks ago or mm-hmm. whatever. I don't give a fuck if it's halfway out of it's, her. It, you're not scoring. You're not gaining a point on either one of them. I at any point in their lives probably not if they stay if they stay extremely focused and they they have like lots of money on the line that they can't lose even one point if if you put me at my peak then this would have been a long time ago but i guess it was for them too if you put me at my peak i could get maybe i could get into a point and i could i could do some weird shit and maybe i can get a point i think i think at my peak I'm, i can get a point so people that don't even play tennis think they can like win a game or, or win a point or something like that. Yeah, and they're wrong. I'm just saying th- there's an outside chance. If I I would have to think about the strategy. What what is it? It probably is you go crazy hitting it basically as hard as you can every shot. Like you go for a winner every shot. Twenty four straight points. Could I get one return in, get into the point, or hit like get get them on the defensive and hit it one winner? I think it's possible. I think it's possible. Unless your method is fucking with their rackets before the game. You're not winning anything. Probably not. If they stay super focused. I the, If they say if you Because worst, one point it's easy to lose a point. The professional tennis player in the world you could not get a point off of. That's Venus not true. Serena, no, no, one point you could. Because you're a point is just that still means they win 24 points to one. That's mm-hmm. like saying it yeah. All you got to do is you could hit one good serve that sets you up or hit one great return, which, which you could do, even off of their serves, potentially, a second serve. Um, that said, you're probably right. The mean, I'm, I'm thinking about back to high school. The meanest thing I ever did in my life, and I think I mentioned this on this show once before, is for some reason I was getting into a conversation with my mom. We were playing or whatever, and I was like, you couldn't win a single point off of me at the, that point. And, and she, because she was saying she could win a game or two or whatever, I was like, I was like, if if we played a set, I can get a golden. That's a golden set off of you. I could win twenty four straight points. She was like, no, you couldn't. And I, I, I think I don't think we bet anything on it, but we did it. I was like fifteen or whatever, 
and I did it. I didn't let her win a point. She won. She she uh, she did did not win a point, and the point was made. And uh, I felt bad about it since. It wasn't worth it. I'm, it's, it's like 30 years later. I still feel bad. It was a little rough. I, that, when I was in high school, I remember watching uh, WWE. And my mom came in and she goes, you know, this is fake, right? And then I fucked her up so bad. Suplex. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, That's a big one. Yeah, I did the suplex. I did the, uh, the Jake the Snake. DDT. And I did the duplex. There's, that's not and I did a, I went off the top rope and uh, tried to break her neck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I take it back. You're right. I wouldn't win. I wouldn't win a point. I hate it when people say that they could do that. This is against, shock you, but against I, the Williams sisters. I believe in you, Greg. I think you could do one. One point. I would Ma- like to watch. Maybe it. right now, because she's post baby. Like, is the movement totally there for Serena right now? I'm just saying. I'm just picturing the disgust she would have at even this being brought up. No, you're right. I hate it when people say that they could do shit like this against pro athletes, couldn't, and I'm I'm now doing it. So you're right. But it's a you little score a point just on her shooting long, right? Hitting one long. I mean, that's one point, right? I mean, that is a technical term. Hitting long. Well, right. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Where you'd have to stay focused. If you could just get into a rally a little bit, make them. They would just have to miss one shot. But yeah. she. But they wouldn't. They're so good that they can control that. That's like easily. saying. That's like saying that I, if I I, if I could blindfold myself and take a hundred pitches against Clayton Kershaw, and if I and I would hit one of them just by randomly. What that's do you mean not blindfold? winning anything. That's what. That's that's the chance. That's as good a chance as you're gonna have. Them double faulting, yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, they're yeah, like, or yeah, they're sure making a mistake, happen. but that's tennis. That's what are your point? Yeah. Making making a mistake. It probably wouldn't happen though. Yeah. Uh, they're the greatest. Yeah. But I take Venus right now. She's still playing. Uh, hey, Greg and Anthony and Aaron too. I recently went down a rabbit hole looking at who's available on Cameo. It's a pretty fascinating list. Some highlights are our old friends Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Uh, this made me wonder what's Anthony's thoughts on Cameo. Cameo is this you know, site, if, if you're not aware, as listeners, where you can have celebrities make videos for you. Does he look down on celebs who do it, or does he not care? Does he ever hear his colleagues talk about it, trade stories? And uh, he, two, I'm sure Anthony would never sign up, but how much money would it take to get you on the platform? What kind of messages would he be willing to send? What would be off limits? I, I would never do this. Um, this is from Joey, by the way, and he says, go wave. Appreciate you. I would never do that. It just, it's awkward. I don't, I don't judge anyone for doing it, but it is occasionally it can be a little sad. It can be a little sad when someone's doing it. Like, why are you doing this? Especially when you look at like how much they value themselves at. I think if I did it, it would, people would be like, roast my friend, roast this person, roast that. And I hate that anyway. Um, I thought about doing it once. Bomani Jones, the one time I've ever bought a cameo was Bomani Jones asking Bomani Jones to forgive me for no showing on his podcast one morning when I was in New York. And uh, it was like, and it was for charity where he's like, I'm doing cameos for charity. And all the proceeds went to uh, this like diaper foundation that gives diapers to people who need them and uh, babies mostly. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, I asked Christy, my manager, I was like, could I do this? You know, it seemed like it was pandemic. It was like, I can do something to raise money for, for pick a charity. And she's like, I wouldn't. She's like, you can give money to charity. You can do other things for charity. I don't know if people get that it's the difference between this is for charity and this is just for me to put 50 bucks in my pocket. And that is a little pathetic. Mm-hmm. I, I just would not do it again. I don't judge the people who are on it. Occasionally I like to go on cameo and look and see who's doing what see where they where they uh, decide they are but uh, it's a little goofy um so i mean i try not to judge on there for free there are people who are good at it who like this is what they do and they'll like give you a um like people who won big brother will give you an inspirational speech if you're a huge fan of someone i can see it being a, a nice thing to, to give as a gift i've thought about doing it in the podcast to be like hey guys congratulations on you know 300 episodes we might do that uh hmm. but i but you will never see me on it um I have made things very awkward, like meeting someone, and at the end of the night, they're like, oh, would you mind doing a video? And I go, let me stop you right there. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't like doing that stuff. Yeah, they asked me at the bottom, Joey asked, there's a number of football analysts on it, former players, uh, how many minutes after An- and Anthony inevitably cancels the podcast, will you sign up? Uh, <laughs> I've gotten, and I'm sure you've gotten these too, DMs. Fairly regularly, they've kind of stopped now over the years from people from Cameo asking me to sign up. Because actually, 
my level of following, I guess, is is perfect for Canyon. It's like we I have a football podcast where we have our audience. It's like those are the type of people that are on Cameo. People like me and we've got like I I kept getting requests and there are a lot of people friends that I know have done it and I would have I didn't want to do it ever but I never considered it because all of those videos just sit on your page there forever really? and for some reason that especially is like oh everyone can just look at this at all times and then there's certain people you see it's like they're on there and you watch a couple of the videos and the videos are just bad or like no one's buying their cameos which mm-hmm. that's sad too yeah uh, the whole thing kind of bums me out so no i've never done it none of the other uh, guys on my podcast we all sort of were like no we're, we're never gonna do that does not seem worth it but i read this whole piece in the new york times like two months ago that was pretty fascinating on the rise and fall of cameo and i was like i didn't never know it rose or fell but at one point it had like hundreds of employees and it had you know all this tech money coming into it brian Baumgartner and, and different people paris hilton were making like literal millions of dollars he, th- there's documents of like he i think he was the highest earner the guy from the office yeah because he was just like cranking him out and he was good at it and whatever he had made like three million dollars from it so people were making serious money from it and then they spent it all on like parties and getting people to sign up and paying people to do it and now they're down to like eight or nine people and everyone's been fired and uh, apparently it didn't work, but it's still happening. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a, not it. a bad idea. It's not a bad service. They just thought they could grow. Everyone's trying to grow everything. It's like you were, it, it's fucking, it's, it's video clips that the people make themselves. <laughs> but okay. there's some people that it's kind of perfect for. Scott, you know, Scott Hansen who does Red Zone. Mm-hmm. If you enjoy, if you would ever yes. think you would enjoy watching the cameo, go check out Scott Hansen, who's probably doing great with it. He's got a million of them up there. All of them, for some reason, are taped in his car, and he's holding a football, and he's just like, hi, this is Scott Hansen. Oh, Greg, like, it's great to see you. And it's just, it's perfect. That He is the perfect person exactly. for Exactly, and he, there's no shame in him doing no, that. No, and he's That's great. That's great. I would never, <laughs> uh, I would never, there was one comedian who uh, had used to have it? He had an account, but it was a joke. It was like it was, was ten thousand dollars, and he's like, "I don't want to do this shit. If you want me to do this, you gotta you gotta pay for it." Who is now? I want to say, after a couple scandals, is on there for fifty bucks, <laughs> maybe twenty five. Uh, oh man, I Got think up. that's what we gotta. End. I could say that's the name, it. but we'd have to delete it. No, that's <laughs> hey, hey, you know what I'm talking about, and that was. Email corner diamonds around the world. Get the fuck out. It's gonna be a long one. That, I mean, the the week we I felt like we talked about a month, and it truly was a week since we did the last episode. This is, we're giving the listeners a little extra for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Although I'm. I, I'm in a little inside baseball. I've got to go to the bathroom. So we're going to fly through this next half. <laughs> I mean, I could read the ad. You could go while I'm reading the ads. I just might. If you, if you really need to. I just I might we, just go right here. I mean, we could pause it. Any other podcast, it's like we, we would pause it. But that's we not don't really that. our ethos. We don't lie to people like that. <laughs> we it's, don't edit. It's dishonest. We don't. Oh, almost... Every once in a while, we'll, we'll edit something out, but it's we've like once edited, every five months. We've edited five times, I think, in the entire time we've been here. Yeah. A- Aaron, I think that's high. I think if it was over under five, I think I'd say the under. Yeah, it's probably two. Headlines. I've begged for things to get edited out. I, was, I remember one day I was like, please, Aaron, please, my parents listen to this. I can't do this to them. And you said, fuck you, Anthony, and fuck your parents. <laughs> that was the day they visited the studio. <laughs> and I forgave you for it. Wait, do you remember on the Rosenthal Jesselnik Vanity Project? RJVB. Oh, wait, that's it. Yeah. Uh, you, We would have a meeting after every episode or, where we'd have to go through all the things that would be potentially cut yeah, out. The producer, and our producer just went through and was like... And it was like a nope. nine thing list. Mm-hmm. And then we would have to, and then we'd have to censor some or edit some. Oh, yeah. Out. He it had was to a edit whole the thing. shit out of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a different world. Remember the time I was like, hey, get him to give me clips of Will Smith talking in different movies. And you asked him, he was like, he said he doesn't want to do it. And I was like, he's our producer. Not even thinking... <laughs> 
He's not getting any extra money for this, and that was a hard job, but he was good. What was his name? Brandon Marcus. Still Brandon around Marcus. at the NFL. Still oh, see him there. Hanging on. Good for you, Brandon. It's great. Uh, our first headline is about Anthony Lessa. Another Anthony. A 23-year-old who was arrested last week after sexually molesting a manatee statue outside Rick's Reef Restaurant. He was first accused of throwing gator nuggets. This is in Florida, as you would expect. And then when confronted, had his way with the marine mammal statue. He was throwing what nuggets? <laughs> he was throwing gator nuggets at people in the restaurant. I think it's, you know, like chicken nuggets, but so like made they out sell, of gators. So like the re- he like bought them from the restaurant and then came yeah. and was throwing them at people. He was like throwing them at people. Uh, yeah, he sexually molested the marine mammal statue out in front of everyone. And then he went to a nearby hotel, refused to go to his room, you know, moved it to the parking lot, disturbed the peace, and was arrested. You're going to have a lot of balls to tell someone to go to their room after they've been chucking gator nuggets and molesting manatee statues. You, I mean, you got a lot of balls to walk up and be like, hey, it's time to, time to take a nap. Time to take a nap, buddy. I, I, I like this headline because of sexually molested. Yes. Manatee statue. I, I molested the statue? Okay. It's a statue. I assume it's made out of concrete. Yeah, we can show a picture. If you're watching on YouTube, everyone should subscribe. It is a pretty hot statue, I must admit. If you, yeah, if you want to see the statue, come to the YouTube. There's a link on the YouTube to subscribe to the Patreon. The Patreon you go to, <laughs> if you get to a high enough level, you can see the manatee statue. It Look, it's... Is it bandaged because of the molestation? I think it's just bandaged. Yeah, again, uh, Anthony, you can subscribe there, but uh, and see this picture. The the manatee, it's it's quite large. I would guess it's 10, 15 feet tall. It's uh, it's blue or purple. I'm colorblind. I can't it's really bl- tell. It's blue. It's bandaged the fuck up, and um, it's got no eyes. I think it's just emotionally healing after the molestation. It looks like a student project. I I wonder. <laughs> I, I wonder if they got. It, did it say in the article that he broke it? No. Because there's no. There, listen. I don't know if you can see it. Listen, guys. If you want to see this manatee, get your parents' credit card, <laughs> and start clicking links. Start clicking links and entering numbers until you get to see this thing. There's no holes. Right, that is there's zero that, holes. That that's that concerning. statue got pushed over, and they're trying to sexualize it because they're freaks down there. Yeah, I don't think you can sexually molest this manatee statue without a hole. There, to me, it can't happen. I guess he could he could you know pull his pants down or something, and I think he was just rub, rubbing on it. Rubbing I think he was just it. rubbing on it on the back. Yeah. I, let me tell you something. If I'm at a restaurant and someone's throwing nuggets at me. And then they go off and molest a stat, a holeless statue, a statue without holes. I'm happy he moved on. I'm happy he graduated from throwing gator nuggets <laughs> into molesting statues. They, the, the headline's wrong. What do you was mean? Was he charged with the, with the sexually molesting a statue? Uh, no, I think. I think it's part. This is like they're telling the story and they're realizing it's not that good, so they start adding shit. I think it's. I mean, I do He's think it's pretty good. We can see a, a picture of the uh, the man who was arrested, Anthony, who better looking than you'd expect. Just gotta say it. Yeah, I, I think Anthony had a bad day. I think he was on a little something, had a bad day. He doesn't look. He's like a couple of days of beard growth away from like that's what you do. <laughs> I think he again trying to be funny. Went a little too far. I think the statue's going to be okay. Again, if you want to see what this guy looks like, <laughs> patreon.com backslash JRVP, junior vice president. Enter in all the, all the information on the credit card. <laughs> I'm going to want the billing address. <laughs> I'm going to want uh, the four-digit four code or three-digit code. Yeah. Aaron collects them. He, it's safe with him. Mm-hmm. We also want, we want the email address. And the phone number. And you might ask why? Don't ask. Just we want it for later. Trust us with your money if you want to see the pictures of the things we talk about. <laughs> Our second story, um, you know, it's perfect this time of year. It's almost Christmas. It's the last year, VP of the year. Uh, felt like the right time to break out another decapitation story. It's, Love it. It's one of our go-tos. Uh, an Ocean City, New Jersey man is charged with murdering and decapitating his mother. Uh, this is uh, a man who is uh, charged again with decapitating the 74-year-old mother. He called 911, told them he killed his mother, 
And when they arrived at his apartment, they found him lying nude on top of her. Okay. I did not know that part. I didn't know the laying down on her nude. Everyone mourns differently. Everyone says goodbye in different ways. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge him there. Here's what I'm going to talk about. You're saying he's charged with murder and decapitation. I feel like <laughs> if you murder someone, you got to go to jail. Yeah. You got to go to jail unless it's like a revenge crime where it makes sense. You know what I mean? Someone hurts your kid, you kill them. I think you, I think you skate on that. I think if you murder someone and you decapitate them, I think it's less of a sentence. Mm. I think it's kind of like a half court shot. You know what I mean? Like you, like you get an extra, you get the three points. You get a little something. Like it should be a four point shot if it's behind, if it's behind the half court line. That if you decapitate someone, I think it should be half the sentence. You know, murder is murder, but decapitation, the difficulty level is right. higher. Especially it, if it's your own mom. You got to be feeling something while you're cutting through that. You know, was it a machete? Was it, because if unless he, unless he does it in one, in one swipe, I think, I think I would give this guy probation because he's only got the one mom. He's not going to do it again. So it's like in, in like diving competitions where even before they dive, it's like, oh, I'm this, calm, I this next one, this, yeah. <laughs> this, this next one from, you know, New Zealand, their difficulty level is 8.8. .8. And like, no matter what the person from America does, like if their difficulty level is 8 point, they can't pass the New Zealand level. If you're going to capitation, the d degree of difficulty is so high uh, that you get time off of jail. Absolutely. Time off jail. And if, I think if you call it even more, like if you go, hey. I'm going to kill that guy from the Queens of the Stone Age concert with a boomerang. And then you kill him with a boomerang. No charge. No charge. That's an eight ball corner pocket. No charge. These, yeah, these stories are always a little difficult reading the details because then you imagine the process of, of decapitation. And there is, there is just something about decapitation that, that makes it. Um, so much harder than you think. You think it's just going to be like a baseball bat swing. It just no. seems worse. It just yeah. seems worse. All murder should be equal, and yet this does seem worse. He apologized too, which to me oh. makes it worse. Sorry. <laughs> that, I love it. Like put the head, just put it back on. He, uh, you know, the, he called. He turned himself in. He called and said, I've murdered my mom. Here's where I am. They got there. He was on, nude on top of her and singing Jesus Loves Me and apologizing uh, as they took him into custody. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the sad part. You know, I would have stopped Sorry before for we got into down. that. Sorry for bringing it down. Look, if you, if you don't want to hear the sad parts of the decapitation stories, you got to go to the Patreon. We edit all that shit out. <laughs> the po on Patreon, it's only like 20 minutes long and you're just laughing the whole time. It's great. My instincts are way better on the Patreon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now it's time for ad copy. It is time for ad copy, and it's always time for AG1. Mm. If you're a longtime listener, you know I've been drinking AG1. I've been on for years. Yeah, I think it's, is it, I mean, it's definitely over a year. It's I've definitely as long as I've been on tour, I think before that, that I'm, I'm at a year and a half every day, AG1. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, it was Rebecca uh, who emailed me recently. After hearing me on this podcast, crying out, a, a cry for help that I was running out of Athletic Greens, AG1, mm -hmm. and I just can't live. And uh, that's how I do it. I just complain on the air, and she heard it, and they sent me a big old box of AG1, and we're back. We're, we're swimming in AG1 again. We're sharing it. We got the travel packs. Emika's loaded them up. She's packing for Japan. She does not go without the travel packs. AG1 is a foundational nutritional sub supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I like it. It's like, it's like the new PS1 games. They're always updating it. It's like the Madden gets updated every week with what's happened. Look, the AG1's always getting updated to make your body better. We talk about AG1 a lot. They, they sponsor a lot of our episodes. We're finding new things to say. Let me, let me throw one out there. And this guy was doing it for like over a year and a half, almost two years uh, coming up. Um, you know how like you take vitamins 
you take like a vitamin out of the, out of the pill, the, the old school vitamins, and then you burp and you get that weird vitamin aftertaste. Gross. AG1, none of that shit. None, none of that shit. You get all the vitamins and the minerals, none of that aftertaste burp. You hit it and you forget it. You hear that, Aaron? AG1, you hit it and then you forget it. <laughs> AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide my body the support it needs daily. That's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1. Get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, it's the holidays. You know, whether or not your uh, family gives gifts, uh, it's a time you can define to give a gift to yourself. Holiday is a great time to do that by starting therapy. Go easier on yourself during the tough moments. It's a stressful time of year. Treating yourself maybe to a complete day of rest. Remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. You can do that through therapy. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with the licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime at no additional charge. This is the time of year um, when there's a lot going on. It could be work. It could be family. It could be get, It could be everything. Pressures. Uh, it's a good time of year to have someone that's there to listen to everything you're saying, help you learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash JRVP today. You get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash JRVP. The holidays are a dark time. They don't have to be BetterHelp. If it, listen, if you need it, it's there. I think you should use it. Give it as a gift to someone. Merry Christmas, you crazy bitch. And that was ad copy. Maybe we give the money back and that one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's the edit. Hey, Greg <laughs> and Anthony. Oh, wait, that's the email corner. We're on to the third headline. I'm excited about this one. Uh, I was sent in by multiple listeners. So, you know, it's good. Again, keep them coming. JRVP Junior Vice President at gmail.com. I want to be swimming in emails and headlines. Uh, when we get back and if you go to the, the Patreon year. if you go to the Patreon and sign up for the Patreon and go to the gold tier you can call us you can call us and ask us questions and give us headlines you can guarantee your headline will be read mm -hmm. either on the show or we'll just do it personally for a premium over amount? the phone yeah we'll read it to you if you get to a high enough level we'll be like you gotta drink AG1 Greg <laughs> I don't know I could have picked any name <laughs> yeah. and I picked the, the one I couldn't use Gary. Uh, yeah, send them in. Because, I, look, I, I, I have uh, access to the, the, the JRVP Junior Vice President Gmail. It's not just Heidi. It's not just Miss Kim. We might have to bleep that out. I messed up. It's okay. People know. I see that we get a lot of emails. We don't get a lot of headlines. I want, I want more headlines. Police in Texas, in this one we did get from our listeners, are investigating after a man drove 38 miles with the severed head body of a pedestrian that he struck with this car. He continued driving with that body until reaching a jack-in-the-box. And then when he got the jack-in-the-box, did he tell them? Was he like, I want the double-double and you got a fucking... You got to see what I did. I don't know. I want to know more about how it all happened once he got to the Jack of the Box, whether he got food, then he called the police. It seems to me, based on the police report, because he says he was unaware the whole time the body was in the car, that he basically is saying, I went to Jack in the Box, I stopped there to get the food, and that's when I realized uh, this thing that I hit 38 miles ago uh, was not an animal, and that my broken windshield that I've been driving with for 38 miles um, let a person's body inside, and it's been in the passenger seat. I got to think, I, I assume he was wasted. I it, assume there was it, drugs and alcohol involved. It, it, they haven't said so, but yes, it seems like he was impaired. Yes. But I'll tell you that's what, what he was charged he with. He did a hereditary. You know, 10 years ago, this would have seemed to be on the pale. Now that we've seen hereditary, we know that you're in shock. You're in shock 
when you hit somebody and they go through the windshield and the head's gone. Wait, is that a? Is this another uh, decapitation? I mean, it's, no, it's, it's severed. A it's yeah, it's a body. Yeah, it's a body in there. I think he's he's in shock, and he's hungry. Mm. And you know what? Maybe you don't want to eat anything after you kill someone, a pedestrian like that. But those Jack in the Box tacos are no joke. I could eat them after killing just about anyone. But I'm okay <laughs> with... I would think, though, once you get there, once you get to the Jack in the Box, I would think you'd want to eat inside. I would think you want to get out of the car. Yeah. You're not trying to go through that drive through I think he did. I think he might have. Stood up and got I out? Think, I think he parked. Stretched legs? I think he parked. I've never had Jack in the Box other than breakfast, which... Not as good as McDonald's. I would the, say. the tacos are legit. Okay, but it's it's the kind of thing where if you're eating it, like you're in a bad place. You know, you, it's probably better to get Taco Bell uh, than Jack in the Box. But it's like you're in an area where they just have the Jack in the Box, right? And those fuckers never close. Right. It's like I just uh, killed someone in my car that flew through the windshield. Um, I'm drunk, but I need I need I need a place to eat. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Uh, yeah, he had had DUIs before. And uh, I, I think uh, I think he did it. I think he should be uh, punished, even with the decapitation. You think? He's, I mean, should he get a lesser? Punishment? We don't know. We don't know that it's decapitation. How does? I guess uh, they seem to buy it based on the police report that he seemed unaware of of the body, and that's where I'm a little confused. Like, was it severed body parts? Uh, no, it's a hereditary, bro. I'm telling you, it's a hereditary shock. In a car accident especially, people are just like, you wake up in a car and you're like, I don't know what happened. The shock is real. I buy that. I just think you want a better meal after you kill somebody. <laughs> if you're going to pull a hereditary, you want more than just brownies with walnuts in them. That's my two cents. What's our last headline? Right. Of the fucking year. That's right. Before Anthony goes to use the bathroom, we got one more headline and uh, our year-end recommendation station. An employee of the Senate has been terminated, fired, after he allegedly recorded a video of himself engaging in sexual activity with another man inside the congressional hearing room, a congressional hearing room. The Senate staffer was fired, yeah, after the X-rated video appeared to show him having sex uh and uh, that that was it it was canned pretty quickly this i the, i was hearing this like when did this happen when's this headline from do you have like the, the, the story week. in front of you yeah like i was like hearing it and i just don't politics are so insane that i was like i don't know if i believe any of this i certainly didn't read any of the articles um yeah, the videos, so, I, I found the video quickly. So it's a staffer. They, they, they blurred it out, but they, they put it on Twitter. A staffer having sex with a, with a civilian. It's not Probably, like a senator. Yes. It's yeah. not a senator or a congressman. It's just yeah. a, a guy who works there yeah. having sex and putting it online. Well, I assume he sent it to someone else. And, and like, they put it up. And they put it online. Somehow it eventually got out and it got put online. I can't imagine he would want this to possibly happen unless he just thought they couldn't figure out who it was. But apparently it was very easy to figure out uh, who it was because it shows his face or something for a second. And uh, he's in this room just, you know, uh, banging another guy from behind. It's only like 10 seconds long or whatever. It's blurred out, of course, that the, on Twitter. Uh, but they figured out who it was. You're not supposed to be in there, obviously. His his bot. He was a 24 year old that worked for like an 80 year old senator, Ben Cardin. I forget what state it is. Uh, and then yeah, he was uh, he was immediately fired. I would think that I don't have a problem with this. I mean, listen, you got to get fired for the video getting out. I would think having sex in in Congress. Uh, I would think you'd you'd everyone would want to do that. I would think any congressman, anyone who works in that building who doesn't have to be like escorted around at all times, thinks about having sex in that building. Supposedly it has, uh, among DC people, like that is a thing that, it, yeah. uh, that people do. That it's, it's a risque thing that young people do. You the problem is that you, you, yeah, you, you got taped it, it and it got out. That's the crime, is, yeah. is the embarrassing the people you work for, embarrassing Congress. They don't do stuff like that. Uh, but I think like smoking a joint on the White House roof, like that's cool. You know what I mean? Uh, getting a spitball, getting the straw and trying to spit at the snipers on the roof of the White House. Cool. You know, <laughs> um, 
to going up to the White House with like a bag of dog shit, lighting it on fire, and ringing the doorbell, and awesome, and and bailing. So cool. It's a classic for a reason. It's so cool. You don't film it. You don't film it. I, I feel bad for anyone who's having sex and pulling out the phone and filming. It's just going to get you fired from your job in Congress. Uh, th- the problem, though, is he he didn't address it directly, but on his LinkedIn page, uh, the staffer, we do have a picture of him, said, I don't know why I decided to go for his picture, but I feel like if... You know, he looks like a nice guy. Delaware shirt here. He he lost a lot of fans. If you were gonna be lenient towards him, with um, a post he put on LinkedIn, which he said, "This has been a difficult time for me, as I have been attacked for who I love to pursue uh, a political agenda. While some of my actions in the past have shown poor judgment, uh, I love my job and would never dis- disrespect my workplace." That's exactly what you did. No one's mad. No one's mad that you're that you're into dudes. Right. Everyone's mad that you <laughs> filmed yourself. If you heard, if someone was like, oh, did you hear that staffer had sex and we caught him having sex in there? You might get a reprimand. When you're filming and it's out there, you got to go. Yeah, don't, don't, don't use it as uh, you're being attacked for who you love. I mean, you will be attacked by a lot of people in Washington for that. But this was not that. This, you, were, no. you were losing your job regardless. There's no better way to infuriate everyone than to get in trouble for something and then come out as like an apology. Like remember when Kevin Spacey was like, ah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm decided <laughs> to live my truth. And everyone's like, that's not what we're mad about. <laughs> and now it's Tom. Aaron, have you ever had sex at work? Not this, not this building. Wow. In your life? No. Hey, Greg, have you ever had sex at work? No. Me neither. Me neither. At Fallon, I wanted. To, I like. I was like, maybe I could do something here at Fallon, you know, where you're working in Rockefeller Center. Like, bring someone in, but like, no. It was. It, it was like. It was too dicey, and I don't. I'm not an exhibitionist like that, where it's like, oh, the super turn on is to, you know, go, uh, go have sex at all things comedy. I wish everyone felt that way. Do I want to walk in here and see Al Madrigal's bare ass pumping away, <laughs> at some fucking intern? No. But when you sign the dotted line. That's that's what happens. That's what you get. That's what you get in here. Aaron, you got real quiet when I said that. <laughs> like like that's a pro- Al Madrigal loves his wife. He does. Everybody. Yeah. And he would never never. He would never film it. <laughs> and now it's time for Choo-choo. recommendation station year end edition. Let me tell you, Greg and I were like, should we do year end list? Yes, we should. Greg and I each have 10 books, I believe, our top 10 books of the year. I've got, I could talk about a couple TV shows, but even then I'm like listing the ones that I watched. And I didn't even like them that much. Mm. I'm like, you know, I don't even want to get into this, but if you want to do, you got some albums. I've got a couple movies I could talk about. Okay. We'll focus on the books. Yeah. Let's do books. I'm going to do my 10 books first and we can, we can make this, we can make this a clip. We can do a couple clips of this one. But I could do my 10 books of the year as the clip from the team. And this is, listen, I'm going to give you my number one and my number two. And then it's in no particular order. Okay. These are all, these are all books that stuck with me. I, looked, I read maybe 70 books this year. Wow. And I only chose books for the t- top 10 that came out this year that are like new releases. And, uh, and that, I, that, I, that stayed with me, that I remember, that I could talk about for a couple seconds. Number one, I've, I have not shut the fuck up about this book since I read it. Chain Gang All Stars, Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya, uh, it, my favorite. I I can't wait to read it again. I've owned three copies of the fucking thing. I bought the European version. I got the I got the hardcover. I got the I got the Kindle edition. It's great. It is great. Read that book. Number two, The Bee Sting, Paul Murray, incredible. I would happily make this number one if I didn't flip so hard over Chain Gang All Stars. The Bee Sting is a tour de force. It is incredible. Uh, my larger scope of family history. Beautiful book. I'm in the middle of it. I'll have it. The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor. Uh, an incredible book. A kind of a college, uh, college novel. Townies, college students. It's a great character study of these different people. I really loved reading that. It was a beautiful, beautiful novel. Biography of X by Catherine Lacey. Mm. A great examination of fame. Almost like if you'd like Tar last year. We talked about Tar a lot. Uh, it kind of had that, you know, uh, kind of reckoning with a relationship with a superstar. And a much deeper book than, than you would imagine from that description. Uh, Essex Dogs by Dan Jones. Fucking killer historical novel about the Hundred Years' War. 
uh, following group of guys. Tarantino-esque. You know, Essex dogs, Reservoir dogs, like the, the dialogue is so funny in the book that I loved Essex dogs and I begged them to give me an advanced copy of the second book in the series that's coming out next month. We'll talk about it then. It's still just as good. Read Essex dogs by Dan Jones before the next one comes out next year. It, it's such an entertaining book. Everybody Knows by Jordan Harper, a modern LA noir. Um, great book. Loved reading it. Loved, uh, loved the plot twists. Loved everything about it. It's a, I love LA noir and that's the, the best version I've read this year. Our Share of Night by Maria Enriquez, a horror, uh, a horror novel that I loved. Kind of about a father trying to protect his son from uh, supernatural forces. Uh, the, the ending was a banger. I'm into it. All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. S.A. Cosby, I've recommended his last like three or four books. A great, I, uh, maybe Southern Gothic noir, if that's a, t a term. But All the Sinners Bleed, I got, uh, is, uh, the most critical attention he's gotten, mm. I think, in the past, past few years. One of my, my favorites of the year, great book. The Guest by Emma Klein, a uh, millennial paranoia of, uh, of almost like an influencer sex worker trying to get through a weekend. Uh, just reading that book, I, my, my shoulders were at my fucking ears um, the, from the tension of the book. A beautifully written, The Guest by Emma Klein. And my last one, I was, when I read this book, I remember being like, God, this book is so, this book is so crazy. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a sci-fi noir, if you want. It's a crazy book, crazy title, crazy author name, and read it, really enjoyed it. And when I was looking back through the, my last of the year, I could not go without including uh, The Sham Shine Blind by Paz Pardo. Okay. Uh, just one of those books that you're like, what is this? I can't, you're, you're, it takes the, the entire time to read it to figure out what it is. And it stayed with me. I read it at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, I'm still thinking about The Sham Shine Blind by Paz Pardo, science fiction uh, noir. I, I, really, uh, I really love that book. So those are my top 10. Any of those books, uh, you're going to pick a winner. They're very different, uh, but I loved, uh, I loved reading all of them. I don't know if I can top that. You're you're good at just remembering all this stuff off the top of my head. That's the thing. If I couldn't remember it, I wouldn't it wouldn't be in my top ten. I get it, but I um I also have ten. You can just bang I don't out I don't have the list. Um, I don't have the rules that you have, because uh, you got to include old books sometimes. I, I don't think I read sure. that much uh, new. Uh, but my my top ten books of the year. Number one is The Promise by Damon Galgut, uh, about uh, a family's history in South. Africa battling over um, their property. It just, it's like a combination of the personal and everything that's happened in South Africa over the last 30 years or so. And it's, it's just a page turner, but really effective and affecting and really smart. Uh, number two, I have the book of goose by Yi Yun Lee. This is a hard one to describe, but it's a book about young women friendship. They were in rural, uh, rural France and one uh, pretends to be the author of this book uh, that the other one is really the author about, but it's just very strange. Uh, the Book of Goose uh, by Yi Yun Lee. Something about it just really stuck with me. Their, their relationship was amazing. Uh, number three, I have The Pale View of the Hills, which is a lesser known Kazuo uh, Ishiguro book. One of, I think it was his first book, uh, and it has, uh, like a lot of his books, a twist that, that stuck with me the whole year. Uh, that I did not see coming is just kind of an amazing, short, perfect Ishiguro book if you like him. I also have The Guest by Emma Klein. Uh, I'm with you. That one, just like the way that made you feel was very memorable. Uh, the Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré uh, Fanon Jeffers uh, about the story of a, an African-American family in the Deep South uh, from slavery all the way to the present, essentially. And it can get heavy at times, but it's also very light at times. And just... The chutzpah she had to write this thing, it's almost like 800 pages and it does so much. And yet it's very easy to read to me and still was a page turner and just like an incredible talent. She's a poet and she's just like an incredible writer. So I would say it is worth the effort. You can pair that with Foster by Claire Keegan because that's 100 pages and that's one of the most well-known uh, novellas or short stories probably to come out in, in the UK or Ireland in the last 20, 25 years, which, which I loved, but it packs... Uh, a wallop for such a short book, Trust by Hernan Diaz. That would pass your uh, test of coming out this year. He somehow made a, a great page turner about money, which doesn't happen enough from all these different perspectives. Another one where you don't really see where it's going. Uh, Samantha Schweiblin, uh, I think it was her first book, Fever Dream, 
Uh, that is one where I just know how it made me feel. And Fever Dream is like the perfect title for that book. It's just, it's crazy. Uh, I went with Stay True, uh, which was a memoir, memoir by uh, Wa Shu uh, about growing up in the Bay Area and um, about being a critic. He's a music critic but also about this friendship, a friend that died tragically too early as someone that's lost a, a friend too early. I thought he was really good about writing about the death of a friendship. Uh, and then my last one is Hate Ship, Friendship, Courtship, Love Ship, Marriage by Alice Munro. There's a reason she won the Nobel Prize. Like the first four or five short stories in this uh, collection are four of the best short stories uh, I've ever read in my life. I'm going to give a free one now because I couldn't choose. And you and we both had the guests. So I'm throwing in Detransition Baby by Tori Peters because that was another book that came out in the last year. Uh, and it's a book about um, a woman who has transitioned and all the romantic entanglements and drama that comes with that. Almost a traditional book, but uh, with a trans uh, protagonist, which for me was different. And uh, it was really great. It was a good book. Good uh, reading year is what I was going to say. Yeah. Good reading year. Good reading year. I did not read 70 books. Probably in the low 50s. I'm not sure. I don't know why we're keeping track. It's not the point. I just write them down. I uh, come yeah. at the the year. A Aaron, you want to throw in any? What was the best book you read I'm in the year? middle of four right now, which is not what I like to do. I hate that. I read uh, one book this year <laughs> as The Last Action Heroes. Mm. The same one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. We shouldn't throw out the numbers because then that sounds either too big or whatever for people. Like, whatever whatever the, you want to do. When I'm on yeah. the road, I'm going to read a lot more than I would normally. It's not like I'm, I'm just on a lot of airplanes. I'm in a lot of hotel rooms with, with nothing healthy to do but read. Um, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to brag about it. I'm just saying these 10 books stood out. Uh, right. I didn't start reading this much until like mid-30s. Before that, even though I read plenty, it was not, it was not that level. Of like, yeah, well, you became it. a professional writer. You gotta, you gotta read. Um, yeah, I'm not. I, I, don't, I don't really want to talk about TV. You know, I love Succession like everybody else. I love The Last of Us like everybody else. I liked Swarm a lot. Um, that, that was a. Uh, not everyone watched that. The um, the crazy girl killing everyone who hates Beyonce. I thought was was a. Uh, I want to see that. Show. I want to see that. It was good. It, they check that out. But everything else was like, all right, Jerry Duty, Palti Goldman, okay. Uh, movies, talk to me. Uh, that was like the best one that like I, there's not a lot of lists and then the holdovers May December but I want to see Godzilla minus one I want to see Zone of Interest I would check out Napoleon I want to see the bunch. creator there's a lot I want to sit and watch uh, this year but I, I don't feel like I can speak on movies or, uh, or TV this me year me neither I don't even I don't even have any all I watched was like Terrace House and and the ultimatum queer love which were yeah. both you know they I mean were there was awesome. there were strikes this year it's not like it was like a great year for stuff <laughs> uh, and you said you want to talk music I do have uh three albums I wanted to recommend uh Alves uh kind of a pop band uh from Canada that I never heard of before this year their album was Blue Rev banger after banger I'm trying to think of who I would compare speed them it up to. I've got a piece so bad Alves Blue Rev it's it just Trust me on this one. I feel like you would even like it. Mitski, I, I mentioned her before. The land is inhospitable, and so are we. It's a perfect album front to back. And then uh, 100 Gex, 10,000 Gex. You're always going to have fun with 100 Gex. Queens of the Stone Age uh, might be the only new album. Like I, I had a lot of playlists and stuff this year, but Queens of the Stone Age was the one new album that I... That I got. I, I know. Did Drew put something out this year? He must no, have. No, he didn't. I, I, I remember on Twitter... Recently, he said something about how he didn't put any albums out this year. And he's I mean, got he some put, he bangers like coming. Eight. I feels like he has on every month. But yeah, Droog is going to have a, a big 2024. Uh, but the Queens of the Stone Age album is, is fantastic. That's all I got. Uh, Aaron, anything else you want to recommend? End of the year. This is your last chance. I mean, he's going to explode. The, the, the room will just be <laughs> soaking wet if you take too long. I mean, you, you thought Jury Duty was just okay. I thought Jury Duty was amazing. I loved it so much. I, I mean, listen, it was, I really enjoyed watching it. And for me to watch an entire season of anything is bonkers. But it's like, I'm not, if they like, I'm okay if they don't make a sequel. I'm yeah. surprised the guy is getting work. Yeah, he just had a huge deal. Yeah. Um, and I, I have friends who were on that show, and I, I did enjoy watching it. But uh, that is, was, choo -choo. Recommendation Station 2023. Buy those books. Hey, my brother, Mikey, finish Chain Gang All-Stars. Don't tell me you bought it, read a couple pages, and put it down. Pick it up. It's a banger. Walker or Debbie, I'll let you decide. I think for the final one of the year, we got to kick it to Debbie. 
Debbie, get us out of 2023. We love our listeners. Whoa, Nelly Fatato. That's a spicy meatball. Is that okay, Greg? 